How do you like to grab millions of dollars in profits with a surprisingly easy marketing loophole? Now, you've probably heard about marketing loopholes before. I know there are a lot of marketers and course sellers and people out there pitching the latest loophole, latest scheme, the latest black hat tactic that you can magically, we'll use air quotes, get you customer sales and profits. But do these things really work? And the honest answer is, Sometimes they do. <laughs> if you followed me for long, if you know much about me, I'm typically opposed to loopholes and schemes and methods that are gonna somehow magically make money with little to no effort. But today we're gonna talk about one in particular, and we're gonna talk about one that you can do ethically and that might actually get you some money in your pocket. But the question becomes, how do you know which one of these various loopholes and schemes and things like that actually work and which ones are gonna get you in trouble? Because some of them literally can get you sent to jail. So a great example of this, by the way, is Airbnb. You have probably heard of Airbnb. They're a massive brand. They have made billions of dollars and many people don't know, they started out with a black hat marketing technique. That's how they started. And it took them from just a small page, they were just a single page published on the web, renting out air mattresses for $86 a night. And it helped transform them into a company that is now worth $96 billion. But how do you take this trick that they use to turn your business into a money printing machine? Now look, there are many ways to grow your business fast during your critical first few months. You don't wanna be stuck. You know, a lot of people will, will go for the, kind of we'll call it the white hat marketing plans, that they're traditional marketing plans. And sometimes if you follow those, they work, but they take a long time. And people don't wanna be stuck in obscurity where it just you're not getting traction, you're doing content marketing, you're doing all the strategies that you've heard of and you're just not getting fast enough results. And so you may be in a position position where you know who your customers are, but your customers just don't know who you are. You're like a fresh face that you need to prove your worth and that you have something good to offer. So the question becomes, how do you get in front of the people who need your services while you're still a brand new unknown brand? Well, the strategy I'm about to show you, it actually launched Airbnb from again, just this obscure rental app into a multi billion dollar service. Chances are you might have actually used Airbnb and they would not exist had they not done this trick. Now, and while this trick skyrocketed them to success, let me get it straight. This technique, I'm about to show you what they did, it blurred the lines. If you want to really want to look at the ethical, the line of right and wrong, I don't know. For some people, this might have crossed it. You'll, you'll see as I go through this. But if you want the secret to their success, so maybe you can do this with a tweak that I'm gonna share with you later, which will help make it ethical. So you can do this ethically. So stick around all the way to the end because you might be shocked at just how easy it is to do what Airbnb did, but with a tweak so that you can be ethical and still get the awesome results of this loophole. Now you could implement these techniques after the video ends and who knows what this could do for you. So let's, get into it. Now, this info that I'm sharing with you now, we were inspired by growth hackers, and I'll include a link to them down in the description below. It goes over a little case study about what Airbnb did. That's what inspired me to cover this topic today. As you know, Airbnb is one of the biggest names in travel, and it's not hard to see why. You can book a place practically anywhere in the world at any budget right from the tip of your finger on your phone. But this empire came from very, very humble beginnings. The worldwide sensation started out from desperation and count them, three <laughs> air mattresses. All the way back in 2007, it's 2007 LMAO, we got in San Francisco, no California. Rise, and it, it, they were a scrappy young group of future tech entrepreneurs. And they needed to catch up on rent and they needed cash fast. So out of pure desperation, they decided to rent out space in the home that they were living in that they couldn't afford. Now they noticed that a tech conference was in town and they had surrounding hotels were completely booked. You couldn't get a room 
anywhere. And then that demand, it sparked a flame. The three guys quickly got to work. They created a website called airbedandbreakfast.com, buying three air mattresses and charging 80 bucks a night to crash at their place. You ever wondered where the word Airbnb came from? Now you know. And it didn't take long for all three mattresses to be booked. And the housemates figured out that they were on to something huge. They pulled together some quick cash with minimal effort and they had with the assets they had at their disposal. And like good entrepreneurs, they filled a need that people wanted. Okay. Now, after that initial success, renting out the air mattresses on their floor, they started getting emails from other people asking if they had any other locations available. So think about that for just a moment. They went from three people, right? They had three customers who rented three air mattresses on their floor and quickly ended up with a global demand. People were like, well, where else can I do this? So they knew the demand was there and they knew they had to act. So if you have a business where you're in that situation, you know there's a demand for what you have and you wanna to try to something that's gonna get you results fast, then keep listening and pay attention because we're gonna show you how to do what Airbnb did in just a moment. They took what they learned, they renamed their site to Airbnb, so you know where that name now comes from, and they took on the hotel industry. So from three air mattresses to going head to head with the entire hotel industry. And not only that, they exploited this little website called Craigslist. You might've heard of it. Now, during this time, Craigslist was dominating the rental listing scene. So if anybody wanted to rent something, they did it on Craigslist. And Craigslist, they soaked up almost all the web traffic related to rental listings. So when someone searched Google for, if they wanted to rent an apartment in such and such city, often the Craigslist listings would show up and Craigslist was getting all of the traffic from Google at that time. So they were getting all this web traffic related to rental listings, not just from Google, but from many places. And then Airbnb, the execs at the time, they knew that they needed to get in front of that traffic if they wanted to grow. Now, they had a couple choices. They could do things like buying ads on Google, which frankly are, can be very expensive. They could try branding campaigns and running, you know, doing things like using social media and content marketing to get their brand out there. Or they could get in front of the audience that was already on Craigslist. And this is who they knew. They knew there was an audience there who needed and wanted what they had, and they just wanted to figure out a trick to get in front of that audience. And maybe you're in a similar situation. You're already kind of experiencing that now. And maybe you've got a big, well-established competitor in your niche that has your audience. Or maybe you happen to know that your audience tends to be on any one particular site or a handful of sites. So you're stuck there getting little to no traffic and no attention, and they're getting all the attention. So maybe, just maybe you're willing to bend the rules just in any bit <laughs> to get ahead of the curve, but do it in an ethical way. So what's that old saying? If you can't beat them, join them, right? And that's exactly what Airbnb did. So what they tried next was, uh, we'll call it in the gray area, you know, like legally and ethically speaking. So just, I'm gonna say that going up front, but don't worry, I'm gonna explain how you can do the same thing without breaking any laws and without crossing those morally gray lines, okay? But here's what Airbnb did. They actually created listings on Craigslist. Sounds good, right? That's logical, that would make sense. But they did it for rental properties that did not exist, okay? These were fake rental listings that they were posting on Craigslist. A little weird, right? So they created fake Gmail accounts. So they created a whole bunch of fake Gmail accounts to be able to trick Craigslist. And then they posted fake rental listings promoting Airbnb all over Craigslist. So if you're browsing for a rental in some obscure city in Ohio, you're gonna see a bunch of fake listings. Those fake listings take you over and connect you and get you in front of Airbnb. <laughs> not quite not quite ethical, right? So what would happen is a user would browse Craigslist, they would be blown away by a beautiful listing, something that really was appealing at a price that seemed almost too good to be true. And then they, they would click and of course, it was too good to be true. The listing didn't exist. So, so it would show that the listing was sold out or unavailable. And then when the interested party would then inquire about the property and they'd say, oh, we're sorry, it's already been booked. 
but check out these other rentals that I have on Airbnb. So that it was like a bait and switch. Here's a beautiful place that I don't own, I don't control, but I'm gonna pretend like I do to attract the audience. And then when I get in touch with them, I tell them, oh no, actually that one is rented, but I have this other property. Just go to my Airbnb link, it's right here, right? So then they were driving traffic to Airbnb using Craigslist and this black hat strategy. So they were roping in Craigslist users using one of the oldest tactics in the book, the old bait and switch. So they hijacked the users from Craigslist, bring them over onto Airbnb, and they rented a lot of properties doing this. People came in for one listing and they ended up getting a completely different listing. Maybe the users found a rental that they were interested in, maybe they didn't. What was important to Airbnb is that these people all became aware of this new service that they were launching that nobody knew about before. So millions of Craigslist users were now becoming aware of Airbnb. Some of them ended up renting properties right there. Some of them did not. So they drove lots of traffic to their site and they created a whole new base of users to people who otherwise would have never, ever heard of Airbnb. And they did it all through spam and deception. Crazy, right? Now, they didn't stop there. They would also email people who listed properties on Craigslist saying that they should instead list their property on a superior website, Airbnb. So they were going straight for the rentals, you know, spamming them saying, hey, don't go on Craigslist. You should put your stuff on Airbnb. And then at the same time, they were putting fake listings up, trying to find renters and sending them to Airbnb as well. Now today, you know, that would get some people in some very hot water. I'm sure that if the Craigslist executives were doing that today, they might even end up in jail. They're obviously no longer doing this, but this was one of the key strategies that got them launched. They would use a lot of these kind of weird tactics to bait and switch users to get onto Airbnb. The big question becomes, did this strategy work? Was it effective? So if we fast forward all the way to 2023, when this tech giant raked in over $9 billion in profits that year alone. So to me, it seems like this was effective, perhaps unethical, but certainly effective. So you might be thinking, great, this looks awesome. How do I do this without going to jail? So before you start going out and creating your fake Gmail accounts and spamming Craigslist, let me break this down a little more. If you're an entrepreneur, you know that innovation is the key to success. And so that means you gotta be creative sometimes. That's one thing I really can admire about this strategy is the executives and the, the marketers in Airbnb were, were certainly creative and they were thinking outside the box and coming up with things that others might not be willing to do and got a big result. And you as an entrepreneur need to be that. You need to be creative. You need to be thinking differently than everyone else. You need to be thinking about what are things that other people are unwilling or unknown, they just don't know how to do that you can do to go head to head against all of the bigger competitors in your niche. So when you're promoting your business, you gotta go to where your audience is. You got to get in front of them and drive that traffic back to your website. And this is precisely what I've done over the years. I've figured out ways to find where that audience is, the people that I know need and want my services. And I work out how do I get in front of them and redirect them to my sites so that they can come to my site and do business with me. And sometimes this could mean using forums, social media, being a guest on podcasts, affiliate marketing. There's a lot of different strategies to get in front of an audience. Not all of them are right for you. It's all about picking the right one. And you need to promote your product or website in front of somebody who's already primed. They're already wanting and needing what you have to offer. So you don't have to convince them to buy what you have. They already need it. That's what Airbnb did. They found a willing audience who needed and wanted their stuff on Craigslist and redirected to their website. But we keep dancing around the obvious, right? How do we do this ethically? Look, you want your customers to come to you as a trusted source and someone that can be relied upon to solve their problems. And it's important that your customers trust you enough to be the solution for their problem that they're trying to solve. The bigger the problem, the more they really need to trust you to do business with you. And the biggest way to erode someone's trust in you is to get their business under false pretenses, which is what Airbnb did. So to be fair, they didn't take any money from anybody. They didn't like rip people off and get money for rentals that didn't exist, but they did mislead people as the first, first thing they did in contact with them, okay? 
And then they provided an alternate product and they helped fill the demand and the need. But that wasn't the right way to get started with each customer. They chose a backdoor method to access that Craigslist audience. Got to give it to them. They made a lot of money. But when you're starting your business off from scratch, it can be difficult to build it up from the ground, especially when you're not established and well-known. But what if you could hijack the audience of an established brand and do it in a 100% ethical way? And that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do next. So we've clearly defined what Airbnb did, right? They got in front of an audience, they hijacked it and sent it to their website to sell them stuff. This is essentially something in, in today's marketplace, there's something called Parasite SEO. You may have heard of it, but this is in a sense, the same strategy. And then with Parasite SEO, what you're doing is you're getting your company, your brand and your content published on other websites that already have the users and already have the traffic. And they call it Parasite SEO because you're kind of like, hanging on to and feeding off of the host website, the main site that you, you're you listing on. So you would go to a large site that could be a large generic authority site, or it could be a site that's an authority in your niche. You get some content posted on it, and then you utilize their audience to bring them to your website, okay? So you're exploiting that traffic that already exists on these other sites, like the Craigslist of your niche. So let's talk about a few ways that you can do this right now without having to do any lying or misleading, okay? So the first way to do this is you can use websites and we can look at big authority websites. An example of one of these authority sites is something called Medium. So you can go to medium.com and check it out. But Medium is an authority in the eyes of Google. And so it is very easy to siphon traffic away from Google. They'll go to Medium and on Medium is your content. You're posting your content on Medium to get the eyeballs from Google and other traffic sources to then have them go to your own website, okay? And in the moment, Google loves sending traffic to articles on Medium. And by posting your content there, you get to borrow from the high authority that Medium has on Google and get in front of their massive audience. And sometimes it can happen like that. So you can go on to Medium, post some content, and there are some strategies I'll talk about in a minute on how you make sure that you get it to rank. And then you can see that you can grab a page one ranking in Google overnight and tap right into that buyer intent traffic that you're looking for. The other site that you can do this on, I've talked about it on the channel, it's a site called Quora. It's a question and answer site. And here's how Quora works. People go there, they ask questions, and then other people, answer those questions. So not only does Quora have a lot of traffic, but Google also loves them, okay? Now, it's what's funny is, at one time, Quora was not well-respected by Google and it was not dominating the search engines, but now it is. And much like Medium, content that goes on Quora can rank in Google and many other places really fast. So a lot of time, if you're, you, you, maybe you've seen this in your own Google searches. If you're searching for a specific buyer related question, what are the best air cleaners for a large room? Might be your question, right? You're obviously looking to buy an air cleaner, maybe an air filter that purifies the air in a room. If you're asking that question, you're in the market to buy it. Ask that question in Google and pop, you may see a Quora answer be right there, ready to answer that question. So the users are gonna click it and go over to Quora. I've talked about it again before on the channel and there are a lot of people driving a lot of traffic using Quora. There's a few ways to use it, but here we're talking about you going in there, find the questions that are buyer related to your market, you put a lot of great content in there and there's a, a very specific strategy on how you use Quora to be able to siphon traffic away. And you can check on the channel, we've got training, you can just go to my channel, which by the way, subscribe, if you see the red button down below, subscribe to the channel. There's a ton of great content on building and growing your business. But in the channel, you can do a quick search and find, I've got trainings more specifically about how to use Quora. But it's the same thing, you're gonna tap into and siphon away that good, sweet, sweet authority traffic, okay? Now, one other site we'll talk about real quick was also a site that Google didn't used to like, and now they absolutely love Reddit. Now, there are many conspiracy theories as to why they love Reddit. Google has entered into big contracts and big partnerships with the site Reddit. Basically, it's a big forum. They call them subreddits. Each subreddit is on a different topic. People are in there 
discussing and problem solving and socializing on any topic you could think of. And now again, Google absolutely loves to rank Reddit content and give them some of that awesome buyer traffic. In fact, Parasite SEO has worked so well on Reddit, it's become a little bit controversial. So Reddit is cracking down. So if they find people that are just absolutely blasting their subreddits with spam, right, you don't, I'm not saying you want to go to, to Reddit and spam it with a bunch of garbage. That's definitely not what I'm saying. Other people are doing that and that's causing some issues. So don't do that. And uh, instead, you want to follow a good strategy of providing actual value, contributing to the community, helping people answer questions. And if you do that, you can get a little bit of a free pass to be able to promote promotional content on the subreddits. Now, it's not limited to these three sites. There are literally thousands of sites that you can do this with. These are the three that are generic authority sites across many, many, many niches. And so depending upon your niche market, there are others that you can do this to. And some of them are newspaper sites, some of them are blogs. There are a lot of authority sites that you were probably completely unaware of. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you find them. So there is a quick eight step process that you can do right now to find even more of these sites that you can hijack some traffic from. So step one, you wanna compile a list of what we'll call money phrases in your market. So these are keyword phrases that will indicate that someone is ready to buy. An example of that might be, quote, best weight loss supplements for women over 40. Pretty specific intent there, right? So it's about a specific person with a specific need and they're looking for the best solution. So that obviously shows that someone is ready to buy. Come up with the buyer keywords in your market. And again, check the channel for more training on keywords if you're not familiar how to do this. But you'll get the buyer intent keywords and you make a list. Okay? You're gonna want a list of keywords. And now you don't need like hundreds of these. You know, a dozen would be enough. If you really wanna be aggressive, you, you could do as many as two dozen, but absolutely no more than that. And what you wanna do is you wanna then go to Google and just search those sites and make a list. That's it, put the keyword in. So this is step two, by the way. So step two, search Google and make a list of the sites that show up on page one for those keywords. You're gonna go back to that list. So you finish your keyword and you just do this manually. You don't need to use automation. It won't take that long. You know, a lot of people look for magic automation and tools. For this, it's simple to do. Just do it by hand. You know, it might take a few minutes. Note down all the sites, stick them in a spreadsheet or put them on, you know, notepad or wherever you wanna store your list and then start looking at them. And you're gonna be looking for opportunities. Some of the sites that you will find have opportunities to either buy or post. So they could have user, like the ability for users to create posts on their sites. In the case of say a forum or something, they might have, a, it may be social in nature where you could again, post your content to it. You may find that it's a site that does guest posts. In fact, if it's a blog, I recommend reaching out to them. Even if it doesn't say they accept guest posts, reach out to them, send them an email or contact them on their contact us page and say, hey, I would love to give you some awesome content about, and you could put your money phrase in there, about the best places to buy supplements for females over 40 and see if they'll accept it. Some will. You will find that some will accept it. Some will accept it for free. Some might want to charge you for it. Some might straight up sell it to you, but you want to find those places and you'd be surprised. There are some really big authority sites that you can post on. As I said, Huge brand name news sites are a common place that you can actually just straight up pay them to post an article on their site. That is step four. So you've made your list, you're gonna do your research, and step four is to contact them and find out if it's not obvious on their website, ask them if there's a way to contribute guest content or if they accept those kinds of posts. The fifth thing you can do is keep an eye out for paid opportunities. There may be sponsorships, there might be just straight up paid article posting. There's a variety of different things that you can do to just straight up pay them to get those placements. And then step six, you just post to the site, following whatever you learn about that website. And out of the big list, sure, you might find that half of them are not going to be something that you can post to. The other half, you may find that some of them are expensive, some of them are difficult, but you'll find a handful of them that you can post to. So you just post to the site. That's simple, that's step six. 
Step seven, this is gonna be a little controversial. Step seven is to buy backlinks pointing to the post that you made on the authority site. Something magical happens here because if you have a brand new website that's untrusted by Google and you go buy backlinks, technically that is not allowed. Google will straight up say you're not supposed to buy backlinks, but when you buy backlinks to a brand new site, smack, you get a penalty. But if you're an authority, if you're a trusted source, like the post that you just made, so let's say you found a news site in your niche market who is an authority in the eyes of Google. You post your piece of content to it. You send it some links pointed to that post. You can do this where you put, share it in social media, maybe buy some links. Uh, there are a lot of ways to get links, which we're not gonna go into that in detail today. But if you guys want, let me know in the comments down below and we can do a training on how to get links. Okay, so just pop that in the comments below. I can do an additional follow-up training all about how to get links. But you're gonna get these links, whether you buy them, earn them, post them to social media, wherever it is. And this helps Google find and rank the page you just made. And step eight, you put the money in your pocket and you profit. <laughs> so that is how you do this in a way that does not break any laws and will not get you sent to jail. Now I'm not an attorney, right? And so I can't give you legal advice, but I don't see any way that this is something that breaks or violates a law or is it somehow is gonna get us all in trouble. So I hope that this was useful content. And I would like to know, again, if you want any follow-up training about this strategy, I can record another video and show you exactly how to implement it more in detail. So let me know again, down below, drop it in the comment section. If you want more training on buying or getting or earning backlinks, maybe how to use social media to get links, I'd be happy to cover that if there's enough interest in it. And I wanna remind you, if you want more training like this, then subscribe. It's totally free. You just gotta tap that red subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell icon so that you can click that you want your notifications. YouTube is infamous for not sending the notifications, even when you subscribe. So if you wanna make sure that you get the next video, like when I post the backlink video, if you wanna see that, then make sure you subscribe. Also, if you got some value today, I would appreciate that thumbs up. It does help the YouTube algorithm and I would be eternally grateful. And then finally, make sure you check out pushbutton.ai. That is the my main brand, my big software company right now that we are doing really well with. It helps you build an entire business at the push of a button. It literally builds your whole business. You just answer two questions, tap the button and it will build it all launch it, do your hosting, do everything needed to build, launch, and get started with a brand new business. You can learn more if you just go to pushbutton.ai slash demo. And on that note, we're gonna wrap things up. So I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Until then, bye for now. So for those of you who are not yet a Pushbutton AI customer, then you need to check this out. And all you need to do is go to pushbutton.ai slash demo, pushbutton.ai slash demo, and you can get a live one-on-one -on -one appointment to get on Zoom and see this powerful technology in action. And with Pushbutton AI, it will build an entire business from bottom to top, everything you need from your domain name to your logo, to videos, to audio lessons, an entire course that you can sell as your own, a 30-day email sequence, and it writes, you can send a daily email for 30 days, all written by AI, and a whole lot more. It writes your sales page. If you're not sure how to write an expert sales page to convince people to buy stuff, it writes it for you. It writes a free report that you can give away to get subscribers to your list. It even creates and writes the opt-in subscription page to get people to subscribe to get the free report and it goes on and on and on it even writes your first 10 blog posts for you and it can do so much more social media posts ads all of these things are done and all you have to do is answer a couple of questions and push a button now push button ai is not available to the public at the time of recording this video and the only way to get in is by invite to our behind the scenes beta access. And during your live demo, we'll show you the technology. We'll actually work with you to actually map out an entire course that you could sell as your own. We'll outline the course with you together on the one-on-one -on -one Zoom call. And then if you so decide, if you're a good fit, you can come in, join our Push Button AI beta program and be in business with that very course 
by the next day. Go to pushbutton.ai slash demo to figure out if this powerful technology is right for you. You can register there. there. You'll book an appointment in the calendar. Be sure you show up. Our team will be very excited to meet you and show you how the tech works, outline your new course for you, and hopefully it's a fit and we can work together to launch your next business.